In today's video, we're gonna check out some creepy TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. Y'all have to see this weird video. It's probably one of the strangest paranormal videos to exist on the internet. This man is recording a video of his rabbit and his child when things just get really strange. It all seems fun at first, the rabbit's running around having fun, but then that happens. Did you see it? Pay attention to the upper right hand corner of the screen. A pair of legs just run into frame, jump, and then a figure appears behind this tree. I brightened it so you could see it better. It's just a pair of legs. It jumps and disappears and then a full body black figure appears in the shadows. What it is, I don't know. I'm not really sure where this video was taken, so it makes it even harder to see if there's any type of folklore that could relate to whatever this thing is. What do y'all think is happening here? What was that? I'm not 100% sure if this is real or fake. It looks pretty real, but nobody reacted to the legs running. You know, it could have been maybe just someone running down the street and for some reason the video camera just artifacted them out of existence for some reason let me know in the comments on what you guys think about this video is it real is it fake do you know how it was done if it was fake leave a comment down below letting me know so when you drink this it's like you're drinking the sun bottles up this is uranium based glass and what they did was they would imprint materials into the glass. When I was re researching about uranium glass or baseline glass, they were saying that this is toxic. If you drink out of this, you're gonna get sick. And if you go back to like the 1900s, they actually used to drink out of radium water bottles. That used to be the big thing. And if you think about it, it has the same green glow as the Northern Lights. It has the same green glow as nature. When you think about radium, you think of the Ra or the sun energy the element known as 88. So when you drink this, it's like you're drinking the sun. Bottles up. Because if you take this glass and you put it up against a fluorescent bulb, you'll start to see that it glows. I've been thinking about this whole non-ionizing versus ionizing radiation thing. Non-ionizing is cell phones and devices that we use, all the nonsense that we use and blah, blah, blah. But then you have ionizing, which is the sun and also radium or uranium. So if you think about it, drinking from a baseline glass is like drinking the sun. And say when we think about copper, you get that orange hue, color spectrums going into your water. Just like when people used to walk into cathedrals and the stained glass windows would embed into the water in their body. I really like uranium glass. I think it looks amazing, but it is really scary that it glows. It makes me feel a little uneasy. I've read about it and it seems to be non-hazardous, but to me it kind of scares me a little bit. So I'm just going to trust my gut and stay away from uranium. I could drink out of copper as long as it is properly taken care of. I could do that. But the uranium just seems a little sketchy. Here are signs that a demon is attached to you. Number one, bad luck. For those who understand how the universe works, let me explain something. There is no such thing as a coincidence and everything ends up happening for a reason. So if you're in a rut that keeps getting worse and worse and worse and you can't get out of it, pull back and take a look at how your season has been. Because if you're supposed to be harvesting and all your crops are bad, then yeah, there's something going on. And here's a free one for you guys, bad energy. Demons are energy vampires. And despite what the gurus may tell you, all things that are related to bad energy are not creations, they're perversions. The difference is a perversion is simply the absence of a creation. So darkness is the absence of light. In other words, bad energy isn't created. My name is Izzy Centric. I'm a Christian demonologist. If you like this kind of content, like and follow for more. I mean, that kind of makes sense to me. If demons are low vibration or low energy creatures where they feed off of that, it would not surprise me at all if that is what causes bad luck or bad things to happen in general more frequently. I keep seeing this conspiracy on my page of Amy Winehouse and Lady Gaga being the same person. And I can see why people would think that, because they look so much alike. It's crazy. The conspiracy is Amy Winehouse didn't actually die, but 
she come back as Lady Gaga. But this really brings light to another conspiracy because all kinds of celebrities have doppelgangers. And most of their doppelgangers are super famous too. And a lot of people believe that they're clones. That Hollywood's just recycled versions of the same people. Like these two. They look almost identical. I, I couldn't tell the difference here. And there's more. I mean, not just this. There's all kinds. These two. Just a difference in the way they do their makeup. And this just supports the theory that these people just live forever. They're immortal. They are the elite. So maybe they did find the fountain of youth and we are seeing it before our eyes. We're just now putting it all together. I definitely see the resemblance between Amy Winehouse and Lady Gaga. I'm pretty certain, though, Lady Gaga was around the same time that Amy Winehouse was. So I'm not sure how that plays unless there was some kind of setup on introducing Lady Gaga to kill off Amy Winehouse. That was a pretty far reach for Megan Fox. That didn't look nothing like Megan Fox on the other photo. And the Queen Latifah a little bit. Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video and I make a video like this almost every day. And to everyone that's subscribed to the channel, thank you so much for being subscribed. And for everyone that is not subscribed, I still appreciate you nonetheless. Thank you for watching. And don't forget, if you want to be a part of Questions for DK where I answer personal questions, questions about conspiracy theories or theories in general, leave a comment starting with Question for DK so that I can find the new YouTube search results and answer those questions in a future video. And just a real quick question, do any of you have any other type of social platform that you like to use to keep up with any of the content creators on YouTube, like X, Instagram, Facebook, things like that? Because if so, let me know in the comments because I'm thinking about creating another social platform just to keep up with the viewers because something might happen on YouTube and I would like to keep you guys updated if that's the case. YouTube does have a community tab, but I'm not sure if that works very well or not. So let me know in the comments your thoughts about this. And the only reason why I bring this up is because my computer is making some weird noises and I really need to take it apart and clean it real good. And it might end up blowing up on me when I try to start it back up. And if it does, then I'll have to wait and get another computer so I can continue making videos. And I would like to be able to let you guys know if anything happens ahead of time, you know? A couple of weeks ago, treasure hunter John Ventura was deep in the woods somewhere in Brazil when all of a sudden they came across this mysterious rock. While metal detecting somewhere in the woods in Brazil, they came across this box made of gold, and inside of it was this rock. Whatever this thing is, it seems to change color and temperature when someone touches it. Oh, gente, tá voltando a cor. In this particular part of the video, we can see it heating up the water, and when they put it back into the box, it gets colder and you can clearly see it changing its color. Up until now, there's not much information on what this mysterious rock could be, but I'm guessing that this is most likely some sort of ancient artifact, maybe even related to these ancient myths of underground cities in the Amazon forest. But I'm not sure. I may actually do a part two on this video if I find out more information. Dang, that's actually pretty cool. I don't know if it's real, though, because there's so many things that I question. He said it was in a golden box, but that box looked wooden and the hinges on it did not look old at all. And then he said that it was making the water boil because it was so hot and that didn't really look like the water was boiling. It looked like he was just swishing it around with the shovel quite a bit. But I mean, I could be wrong on that one. It's, it was really hard to tell. It did look like the rock was changing colors though. That was pretty cool. And it would be awesome if this is real because I'm just curious, what is it? If any of you know if this video is fake or not, let me know in the comments because I'm 
I'm pretty curious and I don't really see anything else about it. So I have no idea why TikTok wanted to delete a video that I posted earlier today about a video I recorded of a weird green smog streaking across the sky for quite literally miles, okay? If you're familiar with the Gulf Coast, you probably know what Cat Island and Ship Island are. Well, the entire island of Cat Island was glowing green. The entire island was glowing green. I have no idea why the fuck it was doing that, but there was a radiation warning that was being issued for the southern Gulf Coast for quite literally hours with this weird green smog just streaking across the sky, like I stated. I've lived on the Gulf Coast on numerous occasions. I've never seen anything like this. I've never experienced a radiation warning. Somebody help me clarify what the fuck a radiation warning is. I have no idea what the fuck that is, but if somebody can help me figure out what the fuck this is, that'd be great. There was dead fish for quite literally two to three miles. There was no warning about anything that occurred, but like six or seven helicopters went out to the island. It was the most sketchiest fucking thing I've ever fucking seen in my entire life. It literally went four miles. I mean, as you can see here, watch, the entire island is just glowing green with the big ass green streak going across for miles. Oh, that cannot be healthy at all. I really only see a little bit of green. It's a very blurry video, but that is crazy if that's the case. Like that that is scary because that's got to contaminate so much. Man, it's it's getting pretty wild out there. Have any of you seen this with your own eyes? Because if so, maybe you should take some video of it and actually post it online because I think people would like to see this a little bit more because I'm not seeing much about this online anywhere. We detected the first ever organic material on Mars. You may have also seen these little spider things that Curiosity discovered. What does that all mean? Well, first off, you have to know that Curiosity is a robot that we sent to Mars and landed in 2012. It comes complete with a camera, as well as wheels and tools to identify chemicals. Curiosity has found several different organic molecules, including chlorohydrocarbons and recently methane. Methane is an organic molecule that's mostly made by things like microbes on Earth, and it could be a sign of life. However, there are other abiotic methods, so don't get too excited. These little spider things are believed to just be formations from methane bubbling up to the surface that Curiosity is running over. When we're talking about organic molecules, we're talking about anything that contains carbon attached to a hydrogen. That is the building block for all of our biochemical processes. While we can't say definitively if these organic molecules are a sign of life, it is a pretty darn good bet, and we're going to have to analyze these chemicals here on Earth. Either that, or we'll have to wait for astronauts to actually land on Mars, which is planned for 2040. For now, Mars is the only planet in our solar system that's entirely inhabited by robots. Stay sharp. I think levitation was a scientific reality to ancient cultures. You know, if you just put a block on top of a speaker and apply frequency and vibration... Yep. It moves on its it'll, own. It'll, I mean, basically, we're talking about levitation. That there are forms of energy that are orders of magnitude more efficient than anything we're using today. The pyramids were built with, uh, by lifting, <laughs> lifting stone that weighed tons, thousands and thousands of pounds with sticks. A lot of those stones are 50, 100, 200 tons, even bigger than that. People are really beginning to question. You could look at it as an anomaly. And one culture at one point in history said, hey, you know what? We're going to quarry and, and move 200 ton stones just for the heck of it. All over the world, they're doing these incredible structures with these massive stones. You know, as a builder, I have, you know, had to move heavy weights sometimes. And of course, we'll bring in cranes. Presumably they didn't have back then, you know, or front end loaders lift up a one ton beam. I believe they were able to harness some type of energy out of the earth to move those. I would really like to know what were they using if it is an energy, a sound or vibration force that they were using to move the stones to build the pyramids. What were they using? Was it drum technology? Was it some kind of frequency technology? And why can we not find it today? if it was something that was just used more frequently then. I, I'm really curious about this because it, it seems really obvious that they could have moved it with vibration and sound because that's the easy way of doing it now. But did they have that technology then or did they know how to tap into a form of that technology and implement it into their workings. I just want to know if there is a natural way to emit that much sound to be able to levitate or move heavy objects that easily. They want to keep you off balance. Your job is to maintain balance. And in order to do that, 
you have to understand there's a lot of good things and there's a lot of bad things in this world. And they're trying to ramp up the bad things and expose you to fewer good things. So you have to compensate. Once you understand how this works, you have to create more good things. Be more loving, be more compassionate, be more understanding, be less judgmental, be less critical. Just observe. You don't have to judge anyone. And that's all it takes. Be aware. You raise your consciousness that way. You raise your awareness. So your feet are solidly on the ground. Oh my God, they caught one on camera. <sighs> Are you upstairs? Yeah. Why? Nope. <laughs> no! No! So they just discovered a rift down under the ocean in New Zealand and they just found a whole bunch of new marine animals that they've never seen before, y'all. I gotta take a look at these very interesting things, y'all. Check this out. Let's go to New Zealand now, where biologists have found a wealth of new species after exploring a rift some five kilometers beneath the sea. The organisms include some that scientists can't even identify, as well as a strange creature called a sea pig. This ship had one mission, to find new species in the sea before they're lost forever. And as scientists peered into their nets, they found about a hundred. All seen for the first time in New Zealand's Bounty Trough. First thing I saw was a, a very large sea cucumber, about so big. So uh, that was very nice. That, that came out straight away, and then as we delve through the net, we found a very large specimen of what are called sea pigs, which are sea cucumbers, but they have small leg-like appendages. The crew of 21 scientists also lowered cameras to the seafloor and found some known species living at unexpected depths. Among them was a Taningia dani squid. An animal that's over a meter long, it's got the largest light organs in the animal kingdom and hooks on all of the arms instead of suckers. And so this large specimen swam through the frame, had a little look at us, flashed its light organs once and then disappeared off into the darkness. And that was a heart-stopping moment. In less than a month, the group has found this species of eel pout that's never been described before. This new octocoral and... We've even got at least one creature, which we're not really sure what it is. The bounty trough was long considered. It's crazy that now they're finding new things under the ocean floor when this world is literally, you know, birthing a new world, right? Everything is going into chaos right now. I'm not 100% sure, but I think that that might be an older sea capture video. I'm not going to lie. I would like a pet sea pig. They're pretty neat looking. Fay trap. What is a fay trap? I get asked this question a lot, so I'm pretty sure I've made at least two videos about it so far, but I'm going to make another one because it's still coming up. A fey trap is exactly that. It's a trap. Who is it set by? It's set by the fey. Who is it set for? You. What reason are they setting these traps for me or other people? That's going to depend on the fey and what their purpose is and what they want from you. They could be playing a prank on you. They could be just enacting their mischievous nature and messing with you. They might want what you have in your pockets. They might also want your bones. A fey trap is not going to whisk you away to a magic fey land where you find your dream elf. That's not what's going to happen. It's not going to be pleasant. There are theories that all the missing people with no trace have vanished into fey traps. Um... People ask me all the time, well, what happens if you step in the fey trap? It could be nothing. It could be you disappear and never come back. 
don't, it's going to depend on the fae that set it and if you were the target for it. Sometimes they set them for specific targets. Sometimes it's just people in general because a lot of species of fae don't like us. They're just not nice. Now, I'm going to catch hate from all of the fae workers, probably, but it is what it is. Just because you work with the fae and have a good relationship with them doesn't mean that the other 98% of us do. <laughs> and again, they could take your physical belongings, they could take your memories, they could take you as a snack. Just don't mess with the fae traps, please. I wish that they would have explained exactly what the fae traps were and what they look like exactly because some people would say that the fae are demons. They're probably a hand-in-hand -hand entity, fae's or demons, demons or fae's type deal. What do you guys think about fae type creatures? Do you think fae creatures are real or do you think that that's just a myth? Or do you think people are mistaking fae creatures for demons? Because I could see that being a a big one right there. What would happen if you were tickled for 24 hours straight? Probably think it wouldn't be that bad? It would. After just 10 minutes, you would already feel pretty unpleasant and you would be saying, please, please stop. Now carrying on up until the one hour mark, this is where things get pretty painful. The constant laughing would be giving your stomach a full on workout, literally the best workout of your life. So just get tickled for an hour. But your core would basically go into spasm and it would be very, very uncomfortable at this point. After five hours, this is where the borderline between fun and torture is. Well, not that it was ever fun. But this literally dates back to medieval times where this was actually a punishment. You would literally be tickled as torture. Most notably where they would tie you up and just tickle your feet for hours on end, it would be hell. Doesn't sound like it, but it would. Now when you think of being tickled, you think, yeah, it's not very pleasant, it might make you laugh, but you don't think of it being this bad, especially once you get to the 10 hour mark. Once you get to the 10 hour mark, it is physically unbearable and will actually start to impact your health and your mental health. In fact, it can be so bad that it can actually cause you to have a seizure and get brain damage. You could get brain damage from being tickled. After 15 hours though, your body will literally begin to shut down. Your bodily functions won't work properly. You will literally all over the floor, urinate everywhere uncontrollably because you just can't control it. You're not in control anymore. Bear in mind, we're not even a day in. Pain is so unbearable that you may pass out if you haven't already had a seizure. At 22 hours, this is when you're actually on death's door. And yes, you could genuinely die. You have again an increased chance of having a seizure and you could genuinely end up dead from just laughing too hard after this time. Imagine the pain you'd be in laughing straight for 22 hours. And after 24 hours, full day of being tickled non-stop, the guy who's doing its arm is going to be very, very achy, and there is like a 90% chance that you are now dead. You folks beat that 2,000 miles an hour through Insane. a thunderstorm in Miami Beach, Florida. Whoa, you need you see to see this. Did else see that? Here's the slow motion of the video. What do you guys think it could be? Just take a look at it. Oh, what is it? Be careful, be careful. What is that? Ah, but that could be a satellite. That could be a satellite. Oh, what the
That actually looked like a real video of that UFO in the sky. That spinning effect, it kind of looks like an atom in a way, and it also makes me wonder. It looks kind of like one of those biblically accurate angels. I cannot remember the name. The Seraphim, I think? Uh, I'll put up an image here. What if that's what people have seen back in the day, and they interpret it as one of those angels, and it's really just a spacecraft just floating around? Or what if it's one of those angels just flying around keeping its eyes on things, you know? What do you guys think about this? This one was a pretty good video. I don't know if it's real or fake, and it could be something completely different. It's not even a UFO. It could just be a piece of trash floating through the sky for all I know. Let me know in the comments your thoughts. We have a very interesting video coming out of the Finger Lakes region in upstate New York. The witness was there over the weekend when he records something he's never seen in the seven years of going to this lake. It truly looks like a bubble on top of the lake. The question, though, is what is this? Is it a fog bubble? Is it a cloaked UFO, as some are claiming? Take a look at this footage and tell me what you think. To me, it does kind of look like something might be there that's invisible and the fog is forming itself around it, but it could just easily be a weird formation in fog. I really wish someone had a drone or was on a boat to go out there. That would be so amazing to see up close and just to really figure out, is this just fog or is there something here? Because that looks like there could be something there. Also, the ambience is really nice sounding. This is all the latest breaking news in the UK but in 60 seconds. You could now be allowed to, well, die in the UK. There is a huge debate happening right now in Parliament about assisted dying, which is happening in other countries around the world. At Hancock, another politician saying, yes, we should be allowed to choose if we want to die. A 13-year-old boy has passed away and four others taken to hospital in critical condition after a knife-wielding man was walking around the streets of London in a brutal attack. They are now officially banning best friends in UK school. Um, what? What do you mean? Yep, some schools have already decided to ban having a best friend, and others are starting to bring this into place. It's still trying to ban school holidays or cut them down, so yeah, if you're still in school, I'm sorry. In Wales, they are officially going to make it a criminal conviction to lie. This is just for MPs and people in Parliament. But people are saying, oh, this is going to happen to the general public. Is it? Probably not, but I'll let you know. And this Thursday, so two days time, is officially the day the Rwanda bill becomes law. This is, of course, an effort to tackle on the illegal immigration. I do these roundups every day, so make sure you hit that follow button, and I will see you tomorrow. So my mother was showing me that she opened a banana that she thinks that these are not real bananas. We got it from the supermarket, but when she opens it and she breaks it in half, it gets very tough and doesn't really break. And if, when it pulls, it's like it's glue. It's very tight and doughy. There is no way that that was a real banana. I have never seen that happen in my life. That was weird. It was made out of sponge. Have any of you ever experienced having a banana like that? Because I don't think I would ever be able to eat a banana ever again if I've gotten a banana like that. And I just ate a banana the other day. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. As always, if you enjoyed any of these clips, links are in the description down below. And with that being said, have a good day.